Hello, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, reporting to you from the socially close streets of Western Japan. In Walden, Henry David Thoreau famously observed that there are a thousand hacking at the branches of evil to one striking at its root. And there can be no doubt that there are many thousands that are hacking away at the branches of the evil that we see spreading out before us in the name of this pandemic panic, diligently deconstructing the dissembling discourse of the diseased doomsayers. And rightfully so, I count myself amongst them. However, if all we are doing is smacking down the lies that are being spread about this pandemic as soon as they arise, then we run the risk of missing that root of the evil altogether. So allow me, if you will, to take one hefty swipe at that root with my battle axe of truth by clearly stating and rejecting the new governing principle for society that we are being asked to accept on the basis of this pandemic pandemonium. Now, this new governing principle for society, of course, is implicit. I mean, we're going to sign onto it by our silent consent, not our explicit consent, but nonetheless, it rests on a hypothetical, a hypothetical chain of infection that can take place in the event of a spreading infectious agent. Now, keep in mind, this has nothing to do with a novel coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2. This is about a general principle. But the principle holds that if there is a spreading infectious agent of some sort that is uh, hypothetically infecting people around the globe, and you might become infected by this agent, and you might end up passing it on to someone else, who might end up passing it on to someone else, etc., etc. And somewhere down that chain of infection, someone who is immunocompromised might end up becoming infected, and they might be part of that sliver of a fraction of a percentage point of the population who might die from the disease. And if that were to take place, well, of course, every single link in that chain of infection should be classified as a murderer. And in order to prevent such a mass murder from taking place, governments around the world are not just empowered, but actually obligated to implement a sort of de facto medical martial law by following the pronouncements of the duly unelected health authorities to do whatever they deem necessary to prevent such a hypothetical chain of infection from taking place up to and including quarantining people within the walls of their own homes and or entering those walls to forcibly remove people from their own homes. And at the moment, in most parts of the world, <clears throat> due to lockdown, most of the transmission that's actually happening in many countries now is happening in the household, at family level. In some senses, transmission has been taken off the streets and pushed back into family units. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe and dignified manner. We are being asked to accept this abrogation of our most precious freedoms, including our freedom to travel, our freedom of association and assembly, our freedom from arbitrary detention within the walls of our own home, our freedom of privacy in transaction and interaction, and other hard-fought freedoms that were purchased at the price of our forefathers' blood on the basis of a novel coronavirus that is preventing, presenting a novel existential threat to humanity that has never before existed. But that, of course, is a lie, because every single flu season for your entire life, there have been just such hypothetical chains of infection that have taken place. And I have no doubt, let's put it on the table, I have no doubt that there is someone listening to my words right now who has been involved in some chain of infection that has ended up in some immunocompromised person dying. Never before has that person had to think of themselves as a murderer, let alone lock themselves within the confines of their own home to prevent such a murder from ever taking place again. But that is what we are being asked to accept right now. And I want this out on the table, because if we do not clearly articulate this principle that we are being asked to accept, then by our silence, we will con consent to it. We will tacitly, implicitly consent to what is taking place right now, and I want to clearly state it and clearly reject it. Now, there may be some people in the crowd who disagree with me, so 
first of all, let me put something else out on the table and make it very clear that, of course, none of what I say is to in any way undermine the basic right that everyone has, everyone always has had, and everyone always will have to take whatever precautionary measures they feel is necessary in order to prevent such a chain of infection from taking place, including isolating yourself in your own home, wearing whatever protective gear you want, socially distancing yourself from anyone you come in contact with, or anything else that you feel is appropriate to prevent such a chain of infection. Of course you have that right. But that negative right is now being flipped on its head into a positive obligation on everyone in society to stop all productive human activity, to lock everyone up in their homes, and to treat them as prisoners, tracking and surveilling everything that they do and everyone that they come in contact with on the basis of a hypothetical chain of infection that could take place. And I want that out on the table. If you agree with that principle and you think that is a good thing, then clearly state it. State it to my face. Oh wait, you can't because you are a prisoner within the walls of your own home and you are not allowed into Japan, but you probably think that's a good thing. But at least say it to my digital face. Clearly state that you agree with the abridgment of our most basic freedoms on the basis of this hypothetical chain of infection. And clearly state what where your line in the sand is. What do you think would be going too far for the government to do on the back of such a pandemic panic? Biometric ID, tracing and tracking every movement of every citizen at all times for the rest of their lives? Or uh, the ability to march into people's homes to check for potential infections and forcibly vaccinate them if need be? Or any other number of measures that are now coming into view as a result of this panic. Wh where is your line in the sand? Clearly state it so that when that line is crossed, people will see that you are a hypocrite for cheering it on. Unless there is no line in the sand, and you think that governments are justified in doing anything that any presumed health authority says in the light of a pandemic situation. But at least state it openly and on the record. Don't hide behind vague, fluffy, woolly language. Tell us what you specifically, not the agents of the state to whom you outsource your violence, but you would do in order to prevent people from living their lives in the event of a pandemic. There's a lot to think about here, and I hope you will do so. And join me in clearly rejecting this principle that we are being asked to accept right now. And if you do so, I think we will be getting a lot closer to striking at the root of this evil. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.